In the old days of Game Informer, you know, when we were first making the magazine and we couldn't believe, number one, that we were making a magazine, but number two, that, you know, we would get games from companies. Ryan and I just kind of went like, we should keep one of every game that we get. This is back when there was no digital game, so everything was coming in on cartridge. And then it went from shelf to big metal container. At that point, it was like, okay, this is just growing at an exponential rate. We really thought about, okay, let's make a big vault. It's probably approaching 12,000 to 13,000 games in there. You know, I, I think um, the vault's pretty priceless. These are old ROMs. You can see these are uh, N64 games, but they were longer. This is how they were pre-release. Pre I think the Virtual Boy always gets oohs and ahs just because everybody likes the train wreck that was uh, the Virtual Boy. The Panasonic Laser Active and the Laser Disc games are certainly one of those things that kind of stand out as just, I can't believe that happened. There's a dinosaur getting drunk. We also have a bunch of imported games. A lot of times games would come out months in advance of American release. This was decades ago. I mean, it's a long time, but we used to buy all the big games in Japan first that were published and developed there and play them for preview here. And we have tons of uh, Toys to Life stuff here. Here's the big Amiibo Yoshi, but it's gone into overflow now. There's just so much of it that we can't keep it all in here. The same goes for rock band instruments. We have a full room at Game Informer just dedicated to rock band and guitar hero. We call it the graveyard. We have the Halo 3 Zune. Imagine walking around with one of those. How cool would you be? We unfortunately had to get rid of a lot of boxes for PC games. I don't know if you remember back in the day, but they used to come in big boxes like this. You know, we still have the disc, we still have the manual, but we lost a lot of, I think, great PC history when we lost those boxes. Don't believe this ever came out here. This is the Game Boy Light that would let you see your games in the dark. I don't think Andy ever brought it back to the office after day one. I think we have more bongos than anyone. So if you ever wanna have a bongo party in a live stream, recommend it, we can do it. We kind of have a vault site B, another room dedicated to unfinished games, these gold discs that we used to get before games were released. We used to get them for previews and review purposes. We still have all that stuff. There's games that never came out. If you go back and look at the versions of Tony Hawk we have, it's a completely different game. And I also feel like it's educational. I always encourage any writer here at Game Informer, walk through there, look at things, remember, I think the one thing that, that the vault does teach everybody and ourselves is that it's, it's important to remember where we were. It's important to remember what these games were about. I mean, anything you can do to preserve that, to preserve games, I think is important, especially as we become more digital and things change and servers go away and games actually cease to exist. I think when you have a place that these games can live on is, is, is more important than ever.